Do you know that in Jesus' day there was four to six million Jews, Hebrews living in the land of Israel? Amazing as they all came back. But when they rejected the Messiah, Jesus pronounced this prophecy against them. Jesus Christ said this, Luke 19, verse 41. And when he drew near and saw the city, that's Jesus, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. And Jesus says that because the Jewish people uh, uh, rejected the Messiah that was prophesied and sent to them, God judged them. The Roman conquerors came in in 70 AD. They laid siege to the city of Jerusalem and surrounded it for two years and starved them out. More than a million Jews died in 70 AD and those who remained when the city was pillaged were forced to leave. The emperor was Herodian and he was so engorged with hatred for the Jewish people that he actually pronounced that any Jewish person found within the city limits of Jerusalem would suffer the death penalty. And this existed long after the war itself was finished. The driving of the Lord's people from the land, Roman destruction of the temple and the diaspora. Flip forward a few more pages, seven key events, number five, 638 AD. Arab Muslims take control of Jerusalem. In 638, Arabs, abiding by the newly founded faith of Islam, take the city of Jerusalem and pronounce again that Jews are not allowed to live there. Why all the fuss? Finding out why. Despite the fact that Jerusalem is never mentioned in the Quran, though it's mentioned more than 600 times in the Bible, Despite the fact that Jerusalem is never mentioned in the Quran, the Muslims proclaim Jerusalem as a holy city. They set up the Dome of the Rock there. Call it a holy site. This was 638 AD. Now, people often say to me, James, how come, how come you always, always say that, that we're, we're living in the last days? Well, because these things are being fulfilled right before our eyes. Flip forward a few more pages to the sixth key event, Israel recognizes a nation, A.D. 1948. I mean, this has happened in our lifetime. And God's people, the Jewish people, scattered to the four ends of the earth. How did all these people get back into this place? And, and how did they get a land? Often people will say to me, man, man, I wish we could live in the Bible times. Listen, listen, you are living in the Bible times. And God's word is being fulfilled before your very eyes. The reason I believe we're living in the last days is because almost every single prophecy about the end of the age and the return of Christ requires the nation of Israel on that strip of land. And for 2,000 years, God's people reading God's word of like, oh, well, um, 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 and it couldn't have happened. But listen, now it could happen. And amazingly, incredibly, this has happened before our eyes. Let me just read to you uh, some key events uh, from the past hundred years. It's happening in our, right before our eyes. In 1897, uh, the World Zionist Congress was held in Basel, Switzerland. The Jews from all over the world gathered and made the decision that they were going to encourage Jewish people worldwide to return to this land. Not at all like the land of today. In fact, Mark Twain visited Israel and had uh, the Israeli land and had only negative to say about this desert, this wilderness. Much of what is there today is because of the resettling of the Jews. 1917, following World War I, little, everyone with me? This is so cool. World War I history, if you know anything about World War I history, uh, the Turks, the Ottoman Empire joined with Germany in World War I. When World War I was lost, uh, the League of Nations gathered and they divided up those lands. 
France was given some portions of the Middle East, and Britain was given modern-day Israel and what is now modern-day Jordan, and it was called the Mandate. They were asked as part of the Mandate to support the rebirth of the nation of Israel. So in 1917, Britain promises the formation of an independent Jewish state. At that time, there were only 80,000 Jews living uh, in the region. 1945, after the Holocaust, Jewish people begin to flood into, fleeing anti-Semitism in Europe, they begin to flood into the promised land by the hundreds of thousands. In 1948, the United Nations recognizes Israel as a nation. A day later, one day later, five Arab nations, Jordan, Egypt, Lebanon, Syria, and Iraq, all attack Israel. But the Israeli army, what Israeli army? You've only been a nation for one day. The Israeli army successfully repels all of them. You say, how did that happen? You read through the Old Testament. Man, I'd love to see that Gideon thing happen. It happened right there. Amazing. 1964, the Palestinian Liberation Organization is formed by the Arab nations to lend support to and to control the Arabs living in the region. Now, here's the seventh key event. 1967, the Six-Day War. Israel repels attack and expands its territory. Now, it's hard to even really comprehend this, but in 1967, the Israeli army, which was made up mostly of civilians, just, you know, you, hey, you want to be in the army? Sure, okay, here's a gun, kind of army, okay? They were outnumbered 50 to one. In fact, the Arab nations, Syria, Jordan, and Egypt, Syria in the north, Jordan in the east and Egypt in the south were amassed around their border and they outnumbered the entire population of Israel, three to one. And in terms of armed forces, they outnumbered the Israelis 50 to one. And yet in six days, not only was the uh, war completely won, but from Syria in the north, the Golan Heights was taken, from Jordan in the east, the West Bank was taken, and from Egypt in the south, the Gaza Strip was taken. Incredible.